Welcome to game two of the series. Classy David. Didn't win game one, but I'd say he gave Levinest a pretty decent run for his money. Probably more so than most players so far. To be fair, Levinest playing as well, Commando West. Puma first opening. Puma opening is pretty unusual. I think it's generally considered difficult to make that work, but Levinest certainly pulled it off. Handling there in game one, utilizing Jaeger Light Infantry as a... Uh, as his anti, his hard anti-infantry solutions seem to work well against Classy David's BAR riflemen on this map. So, saw saw some pretty interesting things there in game one. We're gonna see actions reversed here in game two. Love Nest playing as Soviets instead of U.S. forces, and Classy David is going to give over Commando West to try. He's fielding breakthrough elite armor and fortifications to Love Nest's slightly modified loadout of mechanized support, guard motor, and shock rifle. No guard rifle this game. Sturm Pioneers on their way north, taking control of this territory. They will have to backpedal away from Conscripts, which got a nasty volley off on that squad. That's heavy damage right there. And there's the snipe. That's going to really hurt their ability to engage. Brooks Grenadiers continue back capping. They'll be engaged here in the north as well. Looks like Loveness will go with his tier 1 build this game rather than his tier 2. Four cons. Going to go three cons. Two combat engineers, I assume, into M3. So. Lemonis has proven unpredictable. He's a very unpredictable player. I think that's one of his b b biggest strengths is that he's so comfortable with so many different uh, strategies, so many different builds and openings. As um, over Commando West last game, I'm sure the last thing Classy David was expecting was a Puma. <laughs> When he fielded that steward, he was probably expecting to have to fight against a flak half-track. Loveness, whether he read his opponent or blind countered him, I don't know. Maybe he's familiar with Classy David's style, maybe he knew he was going to go steward. Countered it intentionally, but he countered his opponent's decision to go Puma. Against A-Tank, he countered his opponent's decision to go Raketenwerfer <laughs> by not going Tier 1. So... All kinds of interesting things, and in this game he is countering his opponent's decision to go late Kubel Wagon by going M3. So, Lovinus just, whether he's lucky or has incredible game sense, I don't know. <laughs> I do not know, but he always has the right solution on the field at the right time. There's the M3 flamethrower jumping in now. This Koopa wagon is going to have an extremely short window of opportunity to do anything. In fact, it may not have any. It may never even get a shot off. M3 reveals itself against Folks Grenadiers here. Koopa wagon rotating back towards the base. Still no tech for Classy David. He will have to find a way to deal with this threat. First, Koopa Wagon back into the base where it has to hide, effectively. If your units are forced to hide before they ever engage, you may have teched, you may have made the wrong, made the wrong build decision. Not sure if that's going to get away or not. It's going to be close. Levinus trying to get one more burst off. Where, are, where are they going? This is the most strange retreat path I've ever seen. Oh, okay, they're sneaking in a little gap right there. Combat engineers take a snipe from inside the M3, but it does not connect. Folks, Grenadier squad gets away very narrowly, but pretty heavy bleed so far. Here's the Raket and Warfare to protect. Unfortunately, Classy David did not plant a mine anywhere. He might have had an opportunity at some point. He went Minesweeper first. Minesweeper before a mine uh, means your first mine's quite late, leaves you unable to catch that M3 off guard with an early mine of your own. Folks Grenadiers will be forced to retreat here, and it looks like Love Nest is getting control of the south. Cut off simultaneously with all high resource and victory points in the north. There's the sandbag position on the field point. Stern Pioneers will, however, force away one squad of conscripts in the middle, so the Koopa Wagon finally managed to find an opportunity to contribute somewhere. 
suppress the squad even in green cover, allowing Sturm Pioneers to charge. M3 blocking again! That next level love nest blocking! Not enough in this instance though. Base guns will force him back out of the base and folks grenadiers get to safety. There's tier 3 for Classy David, a little on the late side, having gone with a 3 folks grenadier plus bleed, and Rakedwerfer, and Kubowag and Core are opening. This tech is a little bit late, not sure what he's gonna field, I'm not really expecting Puma, okay, a Puma. Puma to counter a Soviet M3 is generally, I don't want to say overkill, just maybe inefficient. Especially when your opponent has guards. Of course, I, I wouldn't really recommend a Puma against BAR Rifleman and Captains here either. <laughs> Loveness made that work, so I'm, I'm hesitant to say that this is a, a mistake. Oh, he just cancelled though and queued up a flat half track instead. Maybe he thinks, uh, I mean, that's a, a much more standard decision. Even that though against guards is, is probably just as hard to micro and keep alive, but at least it has a more clearly defined role against what Loveness has on the field. Never mind, <laughs> folks grenadiers picked it up. I was like, wow, that lucky escape. Oh, okay, never mind. Picked up right there. There's breakthrough chosen by Classy David. He's gonna go full meta, okay, W. He's just gonna, I don't think he's really a uh, Axis player. So I think he's just gonna use the strategy that he's tried and tested. Thus far, he's not having that much success with it. Even a full meta strategy has to be practiced and refined. Non-meta players tend to actually struggle when they go full meta because it's not a strategy that they're familiar with. Take um, Cruzy, for example. He's a good example. He's a primarily non-meta player. Utilizes Lightning War, Blitzkrieg, I think, a few other somewhat oddball commanders, and those are that's the strategy he's best with. And then when he actually tries to full go full cheese with like Guard Motor, he won't be as practiced with it as. Um, as with his normal builds. And Classy David is also a good example of that. Red Wings. I've seen Red Wings go full meta. It has happened. <laughs> it's it's a rare sight. I think there's a difference between meta and viable. Meta means something slightly different. Whatever though. You know what I'm trying to say. Secure. 
set. The static post is now in operation. M3 is still on the field, still bullying Classy David back into his base. Late reaction right. Oh no, he's throwing a grenade. Somewhat uh, weird placement right there, but actually 11s retreat I think hurt him more than it helped him. Three grenade, uh, three models dropped by that grenade. The Folks Grenadier Squad will get away. Classy David currently getting back control of his north fuel here. Ooh, flak half track. <laughs> flak half track gets caught by 11 ST3476. That is tier 3 chosen by 11 Nest. Flak half track only had two kills at the point that it was hunted and destroyed, and Classy David's hopes of winning this game will probably evaporate with it. He will now be relying almost exclusively on Fusiliers for hard anti infantry duties against guards, which is one squad with the G43 is probably not enough. Or Ken Warfer is getting caught out of position right here. Will retreat. Not gonna get away. For Ken Warfer cleared. Second one in production. T34 sustains engine damage from an AT grenade right there and is going to pull back to safety, but conscripts are going to recover this gun. Probably start putting pressure on these tech structures if not pushed away soon. Looks like the G43s are going to try and focus it down though. Levinus doesn't make a retreat, maybe it will get cleared. G34 has not received repairs yet, but in no real danger, we'll stick around to continue putting pressure on Classy David's infantry to retreat back into the base. There goes that one with only one man remaining. This one will also retreat. Gets away with three. Stern Pioneers and Folks Grenadiers have to retreat from the north. The Flamethrower and the M3 continues to be a nuisance. Enforce these retreats and inflict further manpower bleed. Yeah, 600 something, 600 plus is definitely my my top, my top viewer count. Well, there you have it, Classy David, taking out pretty textbook game, I would say, for Loveness. Nothing we haven't seen before, just very solid play. Just working the flanks with uh, M3 and the flame. Uh, flamethrower in the M3, forcing retreats, inflicting manpower bleed, boxing his opponent in, finding the opening on the flag half track with the T3476, unsupported. All these little nuances, all of these very important things for Rubber Commando West to do, not to lose to Love Nest like that. It's extraordinarily important to set up traps with your flag half track, have it protected by mines and anti tank, and make sure that when Love Nest does dive it like that, it the T-34 not only fails to kill the flag half-track, but dies. <laughs> even if it gets away, even then you you might lose. You have to pick up these targets. You can't. Uh, you have to trade extremely well. It's a very tough, very tough situation, and it's good to see Soviet uh, core certainly. Levin is making good use of that because he can just he can afford to when he takes map control this strong. Well played, Lovenest, once again.